Good morning. Greetings to one and all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here today. May God's richest blessings be upon each and every one. If you're watching by television or the internet, we welcome you too. I am Ron Hipwell and this is the First United Methodist Church in Titusville, Pennsylvania. I want to remind you that uh, this is the time to find the registration folders that look like this. They're along the center aisles all the way to the back. Please take the time to fill that. If you are a first time visitor, we are so glad you're here today, and we do have a welcome gift for you, and those are available in the church office, which is down this long hallway. You can find them in there after the worship service. Also, uh, if you have a prayer concern, please take the time to find the prayer cards that are in front of you in the pew racks. Fill those in, and during our first song, the ushers will be around to collect those. Also, we are in the Lenten season, so I want to remind you that uh, there are is a Lenten service that lasts about a half an hour and a Lenten luncheon that follows between 12 and 1 on each Wednesday. They are sponsored by the Titusville Area Ministerial Association and so you are invited to come. We'll have a different speaker each week and a different church preparing the lunches, but they are here. Also, I uh, want to mention, I uh, just found out from Terry that her physical therapy has been going well. And so this coming Wednesday, right after the supper uh, for KFC, the children's choir is going to start rehearsing again. So Wednesday, 530. And um, let's see. Oh, one thing. I got a call from somebody who was very excited last night. Uh, or yesterday afternoon, and she's going to come back and tell you a little bit more about it, um, but she's on vacation. But Rosemary Winton got a hold of me, and some of you know that she went to Philadelphia for a PET scan, uh, and they took out the port and flushed it out in the heparin, and she had a, an allergic reaction, almost died. But she came through that, they got her squared away, and uh, 24 hours later she was out of intensive care and on a plane heading to to Arizona and she just wanted to have me say praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. Jerome. Good morning. <laughs> Education meeting this Tuesday, seven o'clock in the fellowship hall. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I want to call your attention to the Puppet Talent Show this Friday night at seven o'clock. Uh, on the back of the bulletin, the time's right. You know, on the schedule it says five o'clock, but it's actually at seven o'clock. And uh, it's wrong in the messenger, too. But also, I want to call your attention to the hot cake dinner that we're having at Titusville McDonald's. All the proceeds benefit the puppet team. And it's also at 4 to 7 o'clock. And it's all you can eat for $3. So thank you. March 25th, sorry. I just wanted to announce an omission in the bulletin. Uh, all hallelujah handbell ringers should know that your handbell practices start back up on Wednesday. I'm back, baby. Um, you had to hear the screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to be really brief about this. The trip itself it was really good. We got a lot of information. We learned a lot about the land, a lot about building, a lot about locations, and uh, it's adjusting how we're gonna be thinking about uh, if we continue with projects. The project at the church that we worked at, the Methodist Church last year, I was able to visit the bishop there. He's doing, he's continuing with the project and it's, it's looking really nice. Hopefully we can put something together for you. Um, but uh, just to tell you some of the things we face, one, when I, when I first got there, uh, the interpreter and very good friend of mine wasn't at the airport, he had his dates mixed up. So that kind of like set the stage for the trip. But then at the end, I get a message from my wife and the furnace at our brick house froze up, it, did, it quit working and I'm worried about that. And on the way home, we're flying in and we left a car there and my daughter and I were gonna drive back and my son was gonna take a bus because his flight was uh, 10 hours behind ours. And as we're in the air, Nina says to me, Dad, Dominic has the keys of the car. So we worked it out, it took a few hours. My wife was on the other end working and things out and uh, God was certainly helping us. As we ended up renting a car and then on the way home, Nina hit a deer with the rented car. But 
the praise is there wasn't a scratch on the car. I mean, so you see, we saw God working, but there was a, a, a lot of issues in the beginning and the end, but the middle trip was, was really good, and hopefully, hopefully we'll have time to put something together to really give you a taste of what, what, what happened there. So thanks for sending us, and we really appreciate it. I'm the last one and timing's running out on me. Joe talked too long. Anyways, <laughs> I know it's still snowing out and I'm really sorry about that, but I can't help that. But downstairs is some chili to warm you up. And we have a walkthrough. So if you want to take it to go, you can go through the window and take it with you. So please, after the service, please come down and um, make a donation for our Relay for Life. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa and everyone. All right, let's take just a couple moments to celebrate that we are God's people because of Jesus Christ. So let's rise and greet each other and share his love with one another. My greetings to everyone this morning. Will you join me now in the responsive call to worship? <clears throat> I will sing of your love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will walk in my house with blameless heart.
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we gather together this morning in this hour of worship to lift high the cross in our own hearts and our own lives so that the world around us might see the, the love of Jesus Christ in our, in our lives. We invite you to be with us this morning in all that we say and do. As we sing praises, we lift up our prayers to you. We give thanks for your presence with us in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. Horror and agony, the end of the world for me. I stood out of sight, but within earshot of a hill called Golgotha. I heard the nails in the distance, heard the cries of anguish, the jeers of the mocking crowd. This too I heard that day as the Son of God cried out to the Father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Three torturous hours he hung there and bled. I knew that Jesus was the Son of God. I had stood on the Mount of Transfiguration and heard the voice of God speak from a cloud. This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Jesus of Nazareth had to be the Christ, but how could the Heavenly Father allow his death? and such a death among common thieves. Isaiah's prophecy was fulfilled that day. All we like sheep had turned aside. We had each one wandered our own way. But God the Heavenly Father so loved the world that he placed on his son the punishment for all the sins of the world. Jesus died on the cruel cross of shame for me. The lamb was slain for the sins of the wayward sheep.
Thank you, choir. And want to remind all of the children who are here that this is your time. You're invited to come forward. And if you would come to the front right-hand side, because the puppets are here today, we invite you to join with them. everybody I'm going to read you a story from the Bible Ooh, can I help I want to help tell the story I guess you can help once upon a time there was a boy his name was David he lived with his dad and helped take care of the sheep one day when David was out in the swimming pool no David was out in the pasture he was... Watching the Super Bowl. Watching the sheep. Oh. He was making sure that they were safe when all of a sudden... He saw a big wild snowman. A snowman? Yeah. Are you, Have you seen this sure weather? you know the story? Well, I think so. Doesn't everybody know the story? Okay. Well, he saw a big wild lion. Ew. That's not what the lion said. The lion said, Rah! That's right, the lion said, Wait, where did you come from? Anyways, David scared the lion away, and the... Sheep dogs. Sheep were safe. David would also sing pretty songs to the sheep. He would play the songs on... On his electric guitar. No, Robbie. On his harp. When King Saul heard that David was a singer and a harp player, he sent for David to come. To the concert. To the palace. He wanted David to sing for him. Sometimes David would sing and play the harp for King Saul. Then he would go home and take care of the sheep. One day, all of David's brothers had to leave. Oh, because they were going car shopping. They were going to battle, Robbie. Their enemies, the Baltimore Ravens, the Philistines, were coming to fight them. But Goliath couldn't go to the battle because he had to help his invisible friend. No, Robbie. He had to help his dad take care of the sheep. Many days went by. They didn't hear any news about the battle. And they didn't know how David's brothers were doing. David's dad was worried, so... So, he told David to take some board games. Well, not exactly. He told David to take some cheese and other food to his brothers and find out how they were doing. So, off David went. To the fairground. The battleground. Oh. When he got there, he couldn't believe his eyes. There was a great big giant. And he said. To the Philistines. Fee, fi, fo, fum. No, Robbie. He said, send someone out to fight me. But nobody would go because they were too scared. So David said, I smell the blood of an Englishman. <laughs> no. David said he wasn't afraid to fight the giant. King Saul agreed to let him fight. So the next day, David was ready. Pretty soon, Goliath began to yell at the Israelites. King Saul, send out your champion to fight me. Won't your gods protect you? Ha, ha, ha. All the Israelites are afraid of me. Ha, 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 ha. So David went down to the brook to meet Goliath. Goliath was surprised that the Israelites had sent a kid to fight him and thought for sure he was going to win the battle. But David knew that if he trusted in God, he could kill the giant with just his... His Nerf gun. <sighs> no, Robbie, with just his sling. 
He put a rock in the sling and swung it round and round and round. When he released the rock, it sailed through the air and hit Goliath. Right in the eye. Robbie, it hit him right in the forehead, and then he died. And that's the end of our story. Hey, you finally got something right. Thank you, Heaven Loving's Hand, and let's just take a moment to pray together. Well, dear gracious God, thank you for how you work in just amazing ways, and that you, when we have you in us, there is no obstacle too great. So bless these children and all of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're going back to your parents, please do that. But if you're going downstairs to Junior Church, there's Miss Lisa. And this... This is our time to receive the morning offering to present our gifts before the Lord. Ushers, will you please help us? Dear gracious God, we come before you today with grateful hearts, as always. We know that we cannot outgive you. You've given us so richly and abundantly in every way. We thank you that you're our maker and our provider and that you've given us your extreme gift of love through the sacrifice of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so with that gratitude for what you've done for us, Lord, we present to you these gifts Please find them acceptable that we might serve you together and accomplish your mission to reach the world for Jesus Christ. And it is in his name we pray. Amen.
Amen. And you may be seated. And I trust that as we're singing God praise that we are lost in wonder, love, and praise, giving thanks to Him. A few prayer concerns to share with you this morning. Um, we're remembering Alice, Eugene, Thelma, Priscilla, Dennis, and Rose. Also Diane and family, Fran, Dwayne, uh, and their family, for Cindy for a job, for Bonnie, Bill, and Jim. Uh, for the Cory area teachers and students because two schools will be closing and so prayers for the transition and for all of those who are involved in those. Uh, for boldness to share Christ with co-workers is a prayer request for Ellen uh, Bierbauer, uh, for the Dan Way and family, uh, for world leaders and how that impacts Syria and the Ukraine. Also praying for healing for Martha and for Teresa who is facing upcoming surgery. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear gracious God, we thank you for the privilege that we have to be in this place. And we are here for one reason, and that is to honor you because you alone are worthy of our praise. You alone are worthy of our worship. And we thank you, Lord, that you have faithfully made yourself known. And we thank you that you continue to speak to us through your word. But especially you have spoken through your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And help us, Lord, to grasp, to understand, to receive even more today an awareness of you that impacts our daily living. Lord, we lift to you these prayer concerns this morning. And we thank you that you know each one of these concerns and people represented by these names on the cards. And you know what is needed already. We just plead with you, Lord. We beg that you would touch each circumstance that people would see uh, your victory, your healing, your strength. We rejoice with Rosemary and thank you that soon shall return and give us the testimony of what she experienced and that, but we thank you that you have been with her through that. And Lord, we just thank you that uh, you never fail us. We can count on you always. So Lord, help us in faith to trust in you. And Lord, as we open your word today, uh, may we hear from you. Uh, may our minds and hearts be receptive. Plant the seed of your word in us that it brings forth fruit pleasing to you. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're going to begin a series of messages. I expect that there will be some interruptions along the way. But uh, nevertheless, I have been praying and, and I had about four different directions that I that I was wrestling with going, but kept coming back to, to this particular one. And you know, it says on the screen, when in Rome. You can finish the rest of the phrase, phrase right? When in Rome? Do as the Romans do. See, we all know that idiomatic phrase. And sometimes we can mean that in a most courteous sense of the word. So, for example, if we're invited to someone's home and they're serving something that we don't like, when in that home, we do as those people do and be courteous. However, generally, that is not what we mean. We typically mean when we are in Rome, we behave just like everybody else. But today and uh, over the next number of weeks as we focus on the book of Romans, we need to change the thinking when in Rome, don't do as the Romans. Now we're going to hear a little bit from the book of Romans today, but we'll begin to see that as Paul wrote this letter so long ago, that he was writing to Christians who happened to be in the city of Rome, but his intention was to call them and set them apart, or because actually they had already been set apart by Jesus Christ. This particular letter, Romans, 
uh, was written in the year of our Lord, 57. So roughly 20 some years after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is one of the most profound and influential books in human history. Uh, it teaches us the basics of what it means to have a relationship with God and Jesus Christ and is the clearest explanation of the gospel of Jesus Christ that we have anywhere. And so we have the blessing and the privilege to be able to open the introductory words today. And really the message today could stay with the same title, When in Rome, but we'll clarify it even more to say that today we're focusing on the church in the world. Now you could put yourself there if you want to do that because the idea could be you in the world or it could be me in the world, but yet we are a body of believers and all God's people are the church in the world. But the question is, how we carry ourselves in the world. Well, we're going to start looking at verses 1 to 6, but actually the message is going to focus on verse 7, but we're going to hear how Paul begins this letter in the following way. It goes like this. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. And he goes on regarding his son who, had, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and for his namesake we have received grace and apostleship uh, to call people from among the Gentiles to obedience that comes through faith. Notice we're called from something and to something. We're going to hear more about that as we go on today. Those, uh, and you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Now we'll come to verse 7 in just a couple of moments. But uh, as you look at the screen, now not everyone will get this, but most of us will recognize these are images from Star Wars. All right. For those of you who haven't seen the, the, the movies, that's okay. But one day, uh, young Anakin Skywalker and the older, wiser Jedi, Obi-Wan Kenobi, went out to eat at a Chinese restaurant. And while they're eating at this Chinese restaurant, well, the Jedi Master Obi-Wan was having absolutely no problem using his chopsticks. And he was doing rather amazing things to get his food to his mouth. But you know, that's the way the Jedi Master can do things. It was kind of like his lightsaber, but he's using these, these um, chopsticks and just having a wonderful time. But young Anakin Skywalker was not getting along well at all with the chopsticks. He had food on his face and on his chest and on his lap and all over the table. And he just seemed to be having the utmost difficulty using these. And finally, in frustration, Obi-Wan looks at him and says, use the forks. All right, you have to know Star Wars to know what he was talking about there. But anyway, all right. Why would we even tell that absurd story? Well, kind of like Obi-Wan and Anakin Skywalker, they were trying to figure out how to live in a world that they weren't familiar with, Chinese food probably. Um, but nevertheless, uh, and, and you know, his recommendation was to use actually, of course, they use the for some kind of strange uh, theology that's kind of, uh, that's not what Christian theology is. But I want us to recognize that we too do need to determine to learn how to live in our world. And we do need to rely on God in the way that he intends for us to rely on him. Well, today we're going to be seeing some basic guidelines for living in our Rome. Basic guidelines for living in our Rome. And this is where we will get to verse 7. And the first thing that we'll recognize, we're going to read the first part of the verse in just a moment, but we're going to recognize that we need to live in our relationship with God. Live in our relationship with God. Now, I want you to hear what the words say at the beginning of Romans said to, uh, verse 7. To all in Rome Notice this, who are loved 
by God. Now, let your mind wrap around that for just a moment. Let it penetrate into your heart to all in Rome who are loved by God. We'll get to the rest of the verse in a couple of moments, but notice here what Paul's message was to the believers who were in Rome. Now, think about the significance of God loving us in this way. The first basic guideline for us is that we need to live in a relationship with God created and made possible because He loves us. Now, some of you may think that God loves you because there's something even ever so small that He recognizes that He ought to love that you have some small degree of goodness in you and that God loves you because of that. Someone else may be thinking that God loves me because I just happen to be more lovable than other people and that God must love me because I am so special. And now I, I admit some of you are lovable. Maybe some of you are more lovable than others. You can take that wherever you want to go with it. But that's not what this means. We will see absolutely clear as we look at all of Romans, but we need to recognize right here from the get-go that this love of God has absolutely nothing to do with who you are or anything you have done or not done, no matter what it is. That's what's amazing about this love. God loves you because God is love. It's His nature to love. That's why we call it grace. He gives us love even when we don't deserve it. And check this, none of us do. But Paul could write emphatically here, to all in Rome, loved by God. Today we need to let that sink deep in us, to live as a people loved by God. You know, we, we, we tend to evaluate uh, our, ourselves on the basis of who we are, things we do and we don't do, and we get discouraged and run down, and we think, well, you know, I know God should love me because I hear about that thing, but, you know, I'm beginning to wonder if he could love me. But remember, again, it's because he is love that we can have the confidence today that he indeed does love us. Now, listen to what is found in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 8 about the people of God in the Old Testament, the Hebrew people. It says, The Lord did not set His affection on you or cho choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples. For you were the fewest of all peoples, but it was because the Lord loved you. Now the verse goes on, but that gets us to this place where we recognize God's covenant people, His people of choice that we call the Israelites, the Hebrew people. It wasn't that they were better than anyone else, just God extended love to them as He does to you and to me. Also in Colossians chapter 3 verse 12, it says, Therefore is God's chosen people holy and dearly loved. Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's the outcome of that love. But, but notice, dearly loved. That's what God wants to make sure today that we know in our hearts that He gives us undeserved love because of who He is. Well, one day, there's an old farmer that went into a bank, not like the cartoon picture, but you get the idea. This farmer goes into the bank, walks up and sits down with the president of the bank that he's known for a very long time. And, and once he sits down, he says, you know, I have some good news and I have some bad news. And he says, let me give you the bad news first. And, and so he starts in and he says, you know, uh, well, I can't make those mortgage payments that I have with you. 
And he says, that crop loan that I've taken out for the past 10 years, I can't pay that off either. And he says, not only that, but I won't be able to pay you for the couple hundred thousand I still have on outs outstanding on my tractors and other equipment. And then he says, so I'm going to have to give you my farm and see if you can get something out of it. And the banker looks at him and he says, well, that's the bad news. What's the good news? And the farmer says, I'm going to still bank here. I'm going to keep on banking here. Well, that's not much in the way of good news, is it? After hearing all of those, that bad news, it doesn't sound like there's really any good news left. Brothers and sisters, we have good news. In spite of all of the bankruptcy about who we are, in spite of all the faults that we bear and all the sins that we know are so evident in us, we have good news. God loves you. And God loves me. That's the confidence we have in the Word of God today of what's revealed to us because this is God's nature. So, think about it as being embraced by God. If God so loves us as we have been hearing today, then grateful for this undeserved love that we have because of Him, ought we not also to share that same love, even though someone may be undeserving? You know, we tend to base our friendships and our affection toward other people based on what we get back. But God's love was given to undeserving sinners like me and like you. And we need, as a grateful people, to extend the same love to other people. But also, we have received amazing good news. Truly good news in spite of ourselves, in spite of our bankruptcy. And therefore, we ought to take that good news to the world so that others may experience and know that same undeserved love that God gives to all who will receive it. Well, the second thing that we see, remember we are to live in our relationship with God, but we are to live out our responsibility with God. Now bear with me. I want you to look here again at verse 7. We saw the part to all in Rome who are loved by God. And now notice this, and called to be saints. Now, if we can wrap our mind around the fact that God loves us in spite of ourselves, this might get a little more tricky for us to hear this, that we're called to be saints. We want to look more closely at that. Think about the word saint for a moment. Maybe when you hear that word, you, you begin to think of somebody who has been designated by the world as being someone more special than everybody else, because of God used them with a miracle or some reason they were, you know, because of their dedicated service and they are called Saint so-and-so. But that's not what this says. Remember, it started to all who are in Rome, who are loved by God and called to be saints. Now, we want to look at this more closely. It can actually be translated two ways. If you look at various translations, there's, it's sort of debatable whether it's to be translated called to be saints or called saints. The end result is not significantly different because it is very hard and difficult, so it's, uh, we can't make a conclusion necessarily here today because others haven't been able to come to the conclusion, but called saints or called to be saints. That's the issue that's before us. And this is not just for a particular small group of people. It's for all God's people. That's what is here. Now, we like to say, and it is true, that the understanding, the root understanding of the word saint and holiness, for that matter, is to be set apart. But we tend to put a period there. 
after that. And it actually means more than that because it also has the idea of something being dedicated to God. So not only set apart from the sinful world, but dedicated to God. And so when you come into church or any other churches, you often see objects that that are in the church like it could be the Bible or it could be the cross or the, the candles. And, and we call these things sacred things because they, they're important elements uh, of the atmosphere of worship that we have. But do you know that you're to be a sacred thing wherever you go? You may not be in the sanctuary, but you represent God wherever you go. And you're a dedicated thing. So not, you are set apart not only from sinfulness in your own life, but you're set aside to be dedicated to him. It also can mean this. Notice this. The idea is that of separation from. That's true. But to separation to. That means that which is unholy is removed to that which is holy. Now this is something that God does. It's not something that you do. It's not something that I do, but it is something we allow God to accomplish in us. But we need to understand what his intention is that we will live this out as his people. As you look at this picture, it's a very beautiful picture, is it not? And this is a church. Um, but I find it fascinating that they built this magnificent church on an island in the middle of a lake. Now, it, it may be that they have had incredibly powerful ministry. But as I see this, the image disturbs me. Because, you see, when we are set apart as God's people, we're not to be on an island, isolated from the rest of the world. That's not what this passage is talking about. It's rather that we live in the world, but dedicated to God. So that people will see things dedicated to God and people dedicated to God. And so we're not to be isolated from the rest of the world. So the second basic guideline that's before us is to live in our room this responsibility as dedicated holy people before the Lord. So notice in just a couple of moments, well, let's, let me get to these other passages here, but let me tell you a story, first of all, that one day, there was a father and son. It was a Sunday morning. They're getting ready for church, and they're going to go to Sunday school. And uh, the wife wasn't there at this particular time, but the father is there with the son, and, and they're getting ready, and the, and the they're doing all the necessary preparations, eating, putting on their Sunday best, and so forth. But you know how little boys and little girls are. They are often very inquisitive, and they ask interesting questions. And sometimes those put us on the spot. But anyway, this little boy finally uh, turns to his dad, and he says, Dad, when you were a little boy my age, did you go to Sunday school? And the dad said, well, son, yes, I did. I, I always went to Sunday school. There was a pause. And after the pause, the little boy said, well, it's probably not going to do me any good either. <laughs> you see, somehow this father had not given the impression of a dedicated person, a saint, before his son. But we are aware at whatever circumstance that we are in, we are to be set apart for God's use. Notice what Paul or Peter wrote here, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Now check this one out. This one is a, speaks deeply to me. Remember the Corinthians. Uh, you know, Rome was the center of the known world, but... And if there was a lot of evil in Rome, Rome, certainly it was even worse in the city of Corinth in the ancient world. But notice how Paul starts this letter to this church where there were a lot of disturbing things in the church too. He says, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called 
to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. But did you notice this? He says that they're sanctified, past tense, and yet called to be holy. And this is one of the things that we need to understand about the nature of sanctification and holiness. And that is that on the one hand, it is a position in which we stand before God because of Jesus Christ. None of us are saints on the one hand. None of us are sanctified because of who we are and what we do. But because of Jesus Christ, God sees us as holy people because of the purity of Jesus Christ and because God sees us under the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us and so he can call us sanctified in Christ Jesus. That's the key. It's not sanctified because of what you do or what I do. It's in Christ Jesus. But then he says, and called to be holy. So we who are sanctified in Christ Jesus are called to live it out. That's our responsibility that we are a holy people in an unholy world. We are called to be faithful as God has been faithful to us. So, we're called to be saints. I want you to be personal for a moment, not verbal, but personal in your own mind and in your own heart. Because today, if we can identify anything that is not consistent with the Holy Spirit being in us, if we can think of anything that's not consistent with that, we need to leave it here today. Perhaps you struggle with a mean spirit. Perhaps you struggle with anger. Perhaps you struggle with untruthfulness or gossiping. And if it's not that, there may be impurity in some level. If we have struggles in any of these areas, we're not living the holiness out that God is working into us. So whatever it is, if we can identify anything like this, like that, the Word of God calls us to be holy. To dedicate ourselves to Him who has redeemed us through Jesus Christ. So I want to invite you today to leave it behind. I'm going to pray in just a moment, but notice these words. An old time pastor, theologian, evangelist, Leonard Ravenhill, put it like this. The greatest miracle that God can do today is to take an unholy man out of an unholy world and make that man holy and put him back into the unholy world and keep him holy in it. Are you a miracle? Are you the result of God taking you out of the unholy world to make you a holy person and then putting you back into the world to live in that unholy world as a holy person for the glory of God? See, an unholy world sees more clearly our holy God through a holy people. This is the end to which we're called. So not just for Lent, but forever. What do you need to leave behind today that is inconsistent with the Spirit of God living in you? My prayer for all of us today is that we will be able to go forth from here boldly as a loved people by God but also a dedicated people to him that the world can see the miracle of God in us in the way that we live. So as your own place, we can sing.
But I also want to invite you, you may have prayer concerns that some of them that were on the cards, you want to bring them and uh, pray for those people during this time. But also, if there's anything you just want to leave behind today, a time between you and God to say, Lord, you know, I want to thank you. Thank you that you love me in spite of myself. So I want to give you myself as a dedicated person for your glory and for your honor. Let's pray together. Lord, you know our hearts. And there are things that we want to deny about ourselves. There are things that we struggle with. There are things in us that we know are out of line with you being our Lord. So Lord, we want to live so that the world can see Jesus in us. We know we're called to be Christ-like. And so Lord, today, thank you for the challenge of your word to live in this world as a people who are loved by you and as a people who are called to be saints. It's an awesome responsibility. But Lord, we want to show our gratitude. And so receive us and all that we offer you today for what you've given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Jerome. He took my sin and my sorrow. He took my sin and my sorrow. my 
my Savior's love for me. We want to take just a moment and ask God's blessing on the chili. And uh, it is downstairs ready for you. We invite you to join us. We want to take a moment to pray together and then receive the benediction. Uh, dear God, thank you for uh, the team that has prepared the food and for the reason that it has been done to raise funds for those who suffer with cancer. And so bless us with this food and all those who prepared it. And Lord, help us to take with us today not just words to Rome, but to all in Titusville who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. So be it.